Midterm elections are coming soon. We're assessing the most important races from our region and asking our political analysts for insights. It's an unusual season for politics this fall. Plus, the rubber hits the road for all the insurance problems people have seen in the state of Florida. I think it is our obligation to always do as much as we can for the Florida taxpayer. Florida's chief financial officer discussing ways to react from Hurricane Ian. He also explains the ongoing process to try and fix property insurance in the Sunshine State. Speaking of insurance, some great advice and insight from one of the top agents in the region, Billy Wagner and others next on This Week in Jacksonville. Thanks for being with us today. Hurricane Ian was certainly the story of this week. For our show today, I spoke with Florida Chief Financial Officer Jimmy Petronas. While ahead of a storm, we advise you to take video and photos of your home. Well, that applies after the storm, too. Wherever you can get any evidence, it helps. Um, what you want to be sensitive to is the predators that will come out after the storm. JXT was in Panama City literally minutes after Hurricane Michael. So you saw how damaged the area was. The only thing that got to Panama City quicker than JXT were the predators. And these, these predators will come in and they will sign, get you to sign up for all types of services with the interpretation that your insurance company is going to pay for it. Or you will actually be entering into a contract. Please don't sign anything. I ask, I just plead with you. If you, if you, after the storm or needing to get services, your first call is one, make sure you're safe. But call your insurance agent, call your carrier, or even call my office at one eight seven seven my flcfo um, Those damages that you will need to recover from are best handled by your insurance carrier or your agent. And if, if there's an impasse there, you call my office and we'll make them do what they should be doing and help making you whole. You referenced Hurricane Michael a, a moment ago, and you, you invited us to be with you kind of those first moments, search and rescue. You were out there, and I saw you walking up to people saying, hey, if your cell phone doesn't work, we've got another one that will work for you. How do you feel the state of Florida has done in these years? We haven't had a major hurricane in a couple of years. How do you think we've done in terms of being prepared for something like Hurricane Ian? And hopefully that's the only one this year, but maybe not. So far, so good. Uh, part of the concerns that I've had is that there's a lot of new people in this state. And I really can't stress enough. When this storm was contemplating, and 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 maybe, you know, I, I guess when I was contemplating the Tampa Bay market, Tampa Bay has not seen a significant storm since 1921. So there is a lot of um, growth in that community that uh, hasn't been addressed. Some of that growth is is trees. Uh, some of it is where pruning hasn't taken place. We saw it with Hurricane Michael, a catastrophic tree event because trees haven't been pruned. And when you don't prune trees on a regular basis, Mother Nature will prune them for you and then take out power and uh, electrical systems. Well, I'm one of those people who live in Florida who has property insurance, but it's not the same company as it was just a few months ago because this property insurance crisis has meant so many insurers have pulled out of Florida or they've gone out of business. There was a special legislative session and mm -hmm. still some controversy. People say, huh, the state didn't go far enough. They're not protecting consumers enough. How do you feel about what was done there and what, as a homeowner, should I know about the changes that were made this year in Florida? Well, I totally agree with you. I think it is our obligation to always do as much as we can for the Florida taxpayer. There are always, I look at eight, eight years in the legislature, I always found improvement the next year that needed to be tackled. So we will still see the fight with uh, with insurance continue moving forward this coming legislative session. But I remind people, it's not a sprint, it's a march. Every single year, we think we've created a system that is in the best interest of the Florida taxpayer, the Florida policyholder. And then we find scoundrels that are able to game the system and continue to find loopholes that ultimately make the insurance industry find Florida a difficult place to do business. Do you worry that uh, an event like this is going to be one more uh, punch in the gut to these insurance companies? I mean, so many have pulled out of Florida. It seems like this is a very precarious time just for the industry in our state. The state of Florida right now financially is the best we've ever been in the history of the state of Florida. We've got over $20 billion in reserves. We have a state guarantee fund that is there to help if there are insolvencies. And in addition, we've created some unique 
um, you know, relationships with citizens insurance as another backstop. So there are a number of solutions uh, for those carriers that are doing business in the state of Florida, but we can always improve the environment to where the Florida market is robust. It, it's got lots of competition, but to do that, we have to invite capital to the state. The environment right now in Florida has not been inviting to new investments when it comes to the insurance industry. So yes, there is room for improvement. Is it something where we'll see more legislation even into 2023? I know it's been a recurring theme even these last two years. Hey, we got to do something there. Yeah, you, you've got a fight that takes place between the insurance carriers, between the plaintiff's attorneys, between the public adjusters, the construction companies. And at the end of the day, the question I ask is, what about the taxpayer guys? You know, so all I want is those that are that are having policies in the state. If your stuff gets damaged, I want a plan to replace it. And and I look and sometimes all parties are somewhat guilty, um, but there has been improvements. This past special session made some improvements. Last year we had some improvements. We have been empowering the consumer with some consumer choice, with some incentive dollars from the state when it comes to home hardening your house. Uh, but again, none of that happens overnight. It takes time. And as the Florida market starts to uh, become more inviting, the capital will flow and there will be more choices, including cheaper alternatives to insuring your home. I just can't stress enough that the, the you're going to be in a vulnerable place after the storm. You're going to be looking for answers. You're going to be looking for help. And sometimes the help that you're going to receive at your doorstep is not the help you should be taking. Uh, I remind people, if you give anybody cash at your doorstep, you might as well be setting it on fire because there's not going to be a, a pathway to get reimbursed by your insurance company for cash transactions. Again, I can't stress enough calling your agent, calling your carrier, or calling my office. If those are one of the first three calls that you make, there's almost no possibility of anybody taking advantage of you. CFO Jimmy Petronas, his office oversees insurance for the state. So we want to give you a chance to write down that hotline number. It's on your screen, 1-877-MY-FL-CFO. That's 1-877-693-5236. So we will continue on the topic of taking care of your property after the storm. Brightway Insurance Agency owner Billy Wagner takes us through the steps next on This Week in Jacksonville. It's the weekend, and we know accidents can happen anytime. That's why we're here for you 24-7. Don't wait until Monday. Call Farrah and Farrah. Today is about bringing our community together to celebrate what makes this neighborhood special. Neighbors for life, bro. Oh, well, let the fake friendliness continue. Bring your friends. <laughs> the hat was way too much. Bring the neighborhood, weeknights at 8.30 on Channel 4. You may be able to switch to a CarePlus Medicare Advantage plan today. That's right. CarePlus offers all the benefits of original Medicare plus more. Like money back on your Medicare Part B premium. Help paying for groceries. And an allowance to order OTC products. That's good. Anna, don't forget, CarePlus earned a five-star rating for Medicare. Again. Call or go online today to enroll. Don't you deserve a five-star plan? Why do you need new floors? We're not morning people either, but we are flooring people. Right now, you can save up to 50% on specially marked waterproof flooring and get special financing on select purchases made with your Floor Trader credit card. Save on beautiful hardwood carpet, luxury vinyl, tile, and more. It's in stock and ready to go. Floor Trader, the money saver. I was on my way to the gym on my motorcycle. This guy pulled right out in front of me and slid about 50 yards, head first straight to his car. I'm sitting in the ER. I just typed up on my phone, what do I do when I get in an accident? So I, I clicked on the Morgan & Morgan. You don't have to pay until you win. I'm young, I don't really have a lot of money. That was almost a no-brainer. Within 30 minutes, I had my attorney and then I had a full team all working together just for me. I didn't have to deal with a thing. And then at the end, I get a check. And my decision to make Morgan & Morgan my attorney was probably one of the best decisions of my life. 
Say you want to help a local business, but you don't know where to start. You can get that going by nominating and voting for your favorite local biz as part of our Jack's Best campaign presented by Visit Jacksonville. What is Jack's Best? It's Jacksonville's voter-centric guide showcasing the best the 904 has to offer. Help a local business shine by nominating and voting for them at newsforjacks.com slash jacksbest. While you're at it, download the Jack's Best app to find all the best stuff in Jack's. Jack's Best presented by Visit Jacksonville, where you're the local expert. Tracking Ian. High winds, flooding. St. Augustine is underwater. Too close for comfort for some. We saw a water rescue. Debris in the roadway. This is incredibly dangerous. The Weather Authority on News 4 Jax is always watching, always tracking. Now it's just a river. Let me turn the alerts back on. Those winds close to hurricane strength. People you know and trust here for you before, during, and after the storm. We're answering all your questions. The Weather Authority on News 4 Jax. Always watching, always tracking. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And I am one of the many Floridians who had home insurance dropped this year. I have, like so many of you, found a new carrier. I spoke with Billy Wagner from Brightway Insurance about the crisis and about the anxiety that's caused. I would say you're not alone. I think since the beginning of the year, every 45 days, an insurance company has gone insolvent. Uh, and so there's a lot of folks, thousands and thousands of folks that have gone through that situation where they lost their coverage. And we've been, in most cases, they've hopefully been able to be placed with a new carrier and that new carrier is their coverage now. And so as long as their coverage is active, which it should be, uh, as long as their payment was made and there isn't anything in the mail that they missed, then they're going to have coverage with their new carrier and they can rest assured that, you know, they, they've got good coverage and, and this is exactly why you have insurance. It's it's to pay for a claim check when something very bad happens and and that's why you have that peace of mind in that coverage. Billy, we tried to coach people before the storm arrive on things you should do before a big storm. What about on the after side? Are there some uh, things that we should be doing to make sure whether it's roof, outdoors, the home, other things with our property that we just should be thinking about, but we haven't because we haven't done this in a few years? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, some of the pre- uh, advice is to take video recording and pictures of your your home. Well, the same thing after the storm, you kind of want to get some documented pictures and video of what happened. You know, did is there any damage? You kind of do your own assessment on what truly did happen. And I will alert people, a lot of people may be confused that this is going to be a hurricane deductible. So a lot of people will say, well, we're in Northeast Florida it's a tropical storm by the time it's here, but way that it's triggered is what happens when it hits the state of Florida. So it will be a hurricane deductible. So you want to think about that when you're, if you've got a small amount of damage, it's probably not something that's going to be covered. But if you have something catastrophic, then absolutely that's what the coverage is there for. Give me some examples of the difference between that catastrophic size claim and small claim in your mind. I would say, you know, if you have a tree that, you know, comes on, lands on your property, does some damage to your roof, and you've got significant damage in that capacity, then absolutely that's going to be something where I would say is catastrophic. If, you know, you have some trees land in your yard and they didn't hit anything, that would be an example of something that probably, you know, while there is coverage on, on most policies for debris removal, it's probably going to be something that's underneath the, the hurricane deductible. We've been hearing from people all year. There's a property insurance crisis. There was a special legislative session. What has been done there that maybe I should know about as a, a consumer? There was a lot of changes in that bill. I would say for the homeowner, there is some protections that were put in place from a claims perspective. One of those things is if you request a copy of the appraisal or the damage assessment that was done by the insurance company, they're required to give that to you in seven days now. That was part of that special session. And then in addition to that, if there is a discrepancy between what has been uh, claim the claim amount paid out versus that appraisal, they need to clearly define why that there is a difference there. So there's some protections there for the consumer, which I think is 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 the right thing to make sure that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing and and claims are being paid out as they should. One of the things we heard what kind of triggered this crisis was over the years because of damage from storms, whether tropical storms or hurricanes, that hey, roofing contractors came in and said, hey, you need a new roof. I'll get that covered for you, what have you. Any words of wisdom for us as we go through this process after Hurricane Ian? 
ultimately, some of the major issues we're having in the state is because the insurance policy was never meant for it to be a maintenance policy. But if there's if there's a significant storm damage to the roof, then absolutely that's something that should be covered by the insurance policy. So I think what's really smart is to, you know, kind of do an assessment, take some photos of your roof, show it to some people and just say, what, you know, do I have significant damage? When you do, it's pretty noticeable. You'll have shingles that are missing and you'll be able to see it pretty clearly as you do an assessment of the home. And so, and the other thing I would say is be very weary of people just knocking on your door. You know, I, I believe people that have to run around and chase things, you should probably run from. So if if you reach out to people that you trust and ask them, hey, can you recommend somebody that you trust for as a roofer? There's there's lots of great contractors and roofers out there. It's just you don't want to be going with the ones that are knocking on your door. And what about uh, the knock on the door that was flooding during all of this? People, sometimes it's confusing. Do I have flood coverage if I didn't have a specific flood policy in general? What do people need to be thinking about there if you had flood damage? That's one of the things that that keeps me up at night. Key thing is you just need to have it. It's one of those things where we're we're in Florida, we're completely flat, we're surrounded by water, and we're prone to hurricanes. And so one thing that I would recommend, there's a lot of people calling our agency this week trying to get flood coverage now, and we can't do that. So there's usually typically a 30-day waiting period. But I would strongly recommend that everyone kind of has an, a flood insurance policy. And if you do have a flood insurance policy and we also have hurricane damage, the good thing about that is those two entities are going to sort that out and you don't really care who gives you the claim check as long as someone does. And typically what they'll do is there's a line, a water line on your home. And if anything below that water line is generally caused by flood and anything above that water line would be covered under your homeowner's policy. Make sure you get your claim filed right away. And, you know, the best place to do that is directly with the carrier. You know, your agency can definitely help you with that. But getting it in quickly is really important because it's it's rated by severity and also time when the claim was filed. So the, the what you want to do is get it in there as soon as possible to get yourself to the front of the line. So I would just recommend that people get the claim filed as, as soon as possible in with the carrier. And the other thing that I would mention is even though you do have a uh, hurricane claim that is below the deductible, it makes sense to go ahead and file that claim because if there is another storm in this calendar year, that deductible, that amount paid in would apply for you. And so you're almost building that that reserve a little bit in that deductible account. When we come back, let's talk about elections. Just 40 days away or so, political analyst Rick Mullaney just ahead on This Week in Jacksonville. Each week, Channel 4 recognizes the Snyder All-Star Athlete. If you'd like to nominate a high school athlete who excels in the classroom and in the community, go to news4jacks.com and look for All-Star Athlete under the Sports tab. At Fair and Farrah, we do big things. We take on the tough fights. For over 40 years, we've proven we can win the big cases. A night of celebration and inspiration. Service is who I am. I love giving back. I just can't say thank you enough. The third annual Jacksonville Image Awards, presented by the Porter Firm, Saturday, October 8th on CW17. Dr. Cooper, I've heard so much about you. Let's see what you can do. Looks like I have a boss for the next two months. Either get on board or get out of my autopsy. Praying over bodies, talking to a survivor. You're a coroner, not a social worker. Coroner. New episode premieres tonight at 9, 8 central on The CW. The new Florida 300 times the cash offers 28 prizes of $1 million or more. Get your hands on one-of-a-kind winnings. Only from the Florida Lottery. Day or night, your loved ones show up for you. At HCA Florida Healthcare, we do too.
because you're the center of our family, Florida's largest healthcare family. And you'll feel it in everything we do. HCA Florida Healthcare, we show up for you. At Harrell & Harrell, we're not small, but we're not so big that we've lost the personal touch or turned into a law factory. And we're proud to be just the right size for our clients, big enough to take on anyone and small enough to care. It's what we're here for. If you've been injured, call Harrell & Harrell at 251-1111. Don't settle for less than you deserve. Duty calls, kids. If your AC is running but not cooling, making loud noises, or your home's too humid, now you can schedule an appointment online at SnyderAC.com. You're my hero, Snyder Man. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. Political analyst Rick Mullaney joined me for a conversation about the midterms and the unusual season for national and state politics. Election Day, fewer than 40 days away. You know, Kent, it's unusual and maybe historic. The conventional wisdom has been, last year certainly and six months ago, that the Republicans were in position, position for a red wave sweeping the Senate and the House for three primary reasons. Number one is history. Certainly the history is on the side of the party out of power. And you look back uh, for first term presidents in those midterm elections, it is really those majorities have been to the party out of power. That was true for President Trump, President Obama, President Clinton, it goes way, way back. The second reason of course, is the approval ratings of the president. Usually a pretty good indicator of what's gonna happen in the midterms with Joe Biden, historically low approval ratings. Whether you, it's in the low high 30s or low 40s, regardless, some of the lowest in modern presidential measurement of the approval ratings doesn't bode well for the Democrats in the midterms. And thirdly, the economy and inflation. With this trifecta, you would have expected a red wave. And a year ago, you certainly did. And you saw some things happen in Virginia and in other states that suggested it and last spring. But the political earthquake was June with Dobbs, the US Supreme Court opinion in Dobbs in particular, and that changed the political landscape, which we can talk about. In addition to that, Democrats began to take Dobbs and frame this as sort of a concern over Republican extremism. President Biden's talk about, of course, about MAGA Republicans. And over the last 90 to 100 days, some easing on gas prices. So what you have now, especially post Dobbs, which has energized Democrats, particularly suburban women, um, and changed the topic from inflation, is you have very competitive midterms, unlike what people foresaw a year ago. So when we talk about the midterms, uh, clearly we're talking about, hey, two years after a presidential election, then we're voting on members of the House as we do every two years. And there are some Senate races. It seems like the balance of power in the Senate is really kind of up for grabs. What do you think? Kent, it really is. But right now, all the factors I just talked about, and of course with Dobbs, I'm talking about abortion and how that issue is playing out. But in the Senate, take a look at several things and they tend to favor the Democrats. Number one is the map. There are 100 United States senators, 35 are up for election in November, less than 40 days from now. Of those 35, 21 are Republicans, 14 are Democrats. That means for the Republicans, to use a tennis analogy, they need to hold serve 21 times and then win some from the 14. One of those 21 is Marco Rubio, who's in a much more competitive race than many anticipated. And for the Republicans, the map actually is challenging, favors the Democrats. Number two, candidates do matter. And certainly there's been some concern expressed by Mitch McConnell and others that in the primaries, the Republicans may not have put the best candidate forward for the general election. President Trump has had an effect certainly in shaping that. And if you look, you can look to specific races, very competitive races in Georgia, for example, in which Herschel Walker is now closing the gap. That's become a competitive race, but that's a challenge. Take a look at Ohio with J.D. Vance and, 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 Tim, and Tim Ryan, and then, of course, Ohio with Dr. Oz. Other competitive races. Kent, if you were to handicap it today, it's very competitive, but the edge really appears to be to the Democrats when it comes to controlling the Senate in the future come November. But we're still a ways out. It could change, but now it's advantage Democrats in the United States Senate. We talked so much this year about redistricting, congressional redistricting, and how that happened in Florida. And clearly, we're covering the local races. Will what happens in Florida have a big impact on what happens in the House of Representatives? Will we see a change, uh, red or blue, when it comes to the numbers in the House? You know, Kent, potentially fairly significant. Um, that red wave now is maybe a little purplish. 
uh, if you were to handicap it today, the odds favor the Republicans gaining control of the House of Representatives, but not by the margin they once anticipated. And one of the keys is in Florida. Uh, in Florida, until recently, we had 28, 27 congressional districts. We now have 28. And Republicans have been leading by five to six, depending on how you count it. With this redistricting, it could very well be that some people believe that you could increase the majority of Republicans in the state of Florida with the new, uh, with the 28 congressional districts, and that could play a role nationally. So when you look to the House of Representatives, all 435 of them are up for re-election. Those concerns are a little bit different from the Senate. Right now, it favors the Republicans in terms of the majority, but not by as wide a margin as some people thought. You know, before we get too far from it, you talk about various factors that mitigate against a red wave. One of those is the economy. Let's talk about inflation before we go. This is something that I haven't seen in 40 years. It's something that certainly puts pressure on the White House. How does that affect what we might see when it comes to these midterm elections in November? Yeah, there's just no doubt that inflation is number one in the minds of most Americans. And if you're lower income or if you're a senior citizen on a fixed income, this isn't just inconvenient. This is potentially devastating. Uh, so inflation is the number one issue and very related to inflation is the response of the Fed and raising rates, which we can maybe talk about some. But inflation clear and for Republicans, their top issues are inflation because it is a concern throughout the country, along with crime and border security and the economy. On the Democratic side, it's about abortion and reframing the debate, potentially talking about climate change and President Biden's recent legislation and what Democrats would call Republican extremism. But front and center is inflation. And by the way, we got some nagging concerns with inflation recently. We were hoping it was in decline. And the response to that inflation has been very direct action by the Fed. It is top of mind for most Americans. It's something that the Fed doesn't seem successful at yet. A lot of criticism that, hey, maybe they move too slowly. There has been criticism um, that they maybe contributed with easy money policies a while back. But regardless of history, today, uh, the Chairman Powell and the Fed has made it very clear that in fighting inflation is their number one priority. And their number one tool is raising interest rates. And you've seen that. And you've seen that by the Fed. Mulaney points out there's concern that we will see increasing interest rates again from the Fed. And that means some debate whether we're already in a recession or if a recession looms. All right, looking ahead, we postponed a week, but Andrew Rush plans to join us next time. He's an innovator, and we're talking about the benefits of exploring space, specifically manufacturing in space. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at news4jax.com or streaming on news 4 Plus. Why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.